Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm Will. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from sanctimonious sanctuaries to sanctioned sanctorums. And today we're talking about sea elves. Hey, Brian. Hey, Will. How you doing today? I'm doing <laughs> so good. I'm glad to be back here in per- person. Elves. Yeah, we're back in person. Yeah. Uh, notice that there's uh, very little to no delay. Yeah, I know, uh, right? Seriously. Now our quick wit can Now really I'm going to fake a delay at some point. Huh? <laughs> oh, just kidding. That was me faking a delay. So I did it before you, You know will. what D&D has a lot of, Brian? <laughs> elves. Yes, types of elves. And quite frankly, <laughs> we don't talk enough about it. Elves, dragons, dungeons. Yes. Beholders. Beholders. Is here the beholder. It's been a while since we've done anything beholder related. And we're making more. We're making more. We're making, well, we do, we're going to, we do re- beholder related stuff every single episode. That's true. I just mean we haven't actually covered anything beholder related. It'll, Th- it'll be coming up that's soon. That's true. Elves sometimes fight beholders if they become adventurers and delve into dungeons that contain them. That's true. So there's pretty much an elf for every environment. There are wood elves for the woods, Eladrim for the fae, Shatterkai for the Shadowfell, high elves for the cities, Drow for the Underdark, etc. And 5e does a pretty good job coming up with an origin story for why there are so many elven sub-races with the original primal elves being an extremely fluid and transformative race of chaotic good, drawn in every given direction onto every given plane to be molded and melded by their environment. We've covered a lot of the elven sub-races on the show, but not all of them. It's finally time to take a deep dive into the oceans of de- ah. Dungeons and Dragons and meet the underwater elves known as sea elves or aquatic elves. They share a similar sphere to Tritons and Water Genasi, uh, but just to, just know that they were made up first, and honestly, there are so many aquatic humanoid sub-races in this game that it's crazy. Uh, I think we've covered seven or eight of them already, and we, there's still a bunch more. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, let's it's get into it. Get into my bathosphere, William. I've prepared it for today's episode. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Looks great. <laughs> <laughs> so, aquatic elves are tall, standing six feet or more in height. Their ears are pointed, and they have long limbs with strong swimming muscles. Uh, Their fingers or toes are long, generally about twice as long as a human's, and have thick webbing between them. Their most striking features are sets of gills along their collarbone and ribcage. From here, the appearance of sea elves can differ fairly widely depending on tribe and culture. Some have deep green skin mottled and striped with brown, while others have blue skin with white stripes and patches, and others have pale silver green skin. Aquatic elves' eye color can vary widely as well, including colors such as turquoise, white, black, blue, green, and sometimes silver. Uh, Their hair is usually thick and somewhat stringy, with some aquatic elves having a rough hair texture. Mm. Sea elf hair can be blue-green, emerald green, blue, black, silver, or even occasionally red. Uh, Warriors tend to keep their head uh, hair clipped short, but most aquatic elves wear it long and flowing. And females in particular uh, sometimes grow their hair over four feet in length. That's cool. I like very long. I would like the idea of warriors that don't cut their hair uh, until they lose a fight. Ooh, I know. That's a cool. They have like a long flowing mane Mm -hmm. coming into battle. Yeah, you lose it. It's so sad when you get those scenes where they cut them. You're like, oh, no, why? No, not the flow. Not the hair. I wonder what the hair is made out of underwater. The salt is really bad for your hair, like salt water. Maybe that's why their hair is stringy and rough. Right. That's what I'm thinking. But what what could it be made of? Will my hair disintegrate in the ocean if I chill down there too long as my skin would? You know what I mean? I only know hmm. that because some people get lost at sea or mm-hmm. whatever, and they get stranded for like... 20 hours or yeah, 48 it can hours. Yeah, their skin up. And it, they're in the water. They're yeah. messed up. Like they you need... will die at sea very quickly. Yeah. Um, um, they save but, those people and they have issues. What about the hair? Is something happening there? I don't know because okay. they're usually above the water. So I'm thinking like, is anybody submerged Do they lose all their long? body hair? <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, if your skin comes off, then yeah. That's true. So That's yes. True. <laughs> but, like, Fair enough. Does the hair result? I don't know uh, enough well, about hair okay, or but, science but in general. Aquatic elves <laughs> are equipped for living in the underwater at all times. Which is why I'm saying, what's their hair made out of? Hair? Hmm. I think it's just hair. It's just hair. But maybe someone in the comments will let us know. Sea hair. Their thick skin gives them protection from the cold, deep water, uh, keeping them comfortable at just above freezing temperatures. Furthermore, compared to surface-dwelling elves, sea elves are nowhere near as thin as their land-bound cousins. They are larger, heavier, and have deeper voices as well. Aquatic elves, like all elvenkind, live for many centuries, but for some reason it is said that their eyes often show the effects of great age. Mm. Otherwise, sea elves show little evidence of aging, again, like their other elven brethren. Yeah. Aquatic elves usually wear clothes woven from underwater plants and reeds. Some lore states that the dress is quite intricate, most often of greens, blacks, and browns woven in subtle swirling designs. Other lore states that aquatic elves usually go about lightly clad if dressed at all while underwater. 
Most of the elves speak Elvish, Aquan, Sylvan, and an oddly accented common. You don't need clothes in the sea, baby. You don't. You don't. They just disintegrate like your skin. There, it, this is just one of those cases where sometimes when something is old enough in D&D, um, it goes back to the first edition. There just becomes this huge discrepancy between like the lore of how these people live. Oh, and you okay, get that yeah, a lot with yeah, these. That's right. why it's like, well, no, they're nude. Like, no, they have intricately woven seaweed uh, skins. No, nah, man, so. they play sea football and they're covered in conch shells. Conch <laughs> elbow pads, conch shoulder pads, conch helmets. That's Let's a go. fucking lootly. All of it. That sounds like fun. Clam boobies, though. Not conches on your titties. Just clams. That's standard. That's Disney. Of course. Disney bred that. So, uh-huh, it did. Yeah. Um, and possibly other things, because <laughs> what is Disney but just a grab bag of stuff that already existed. So there seems to be quite the discrepancy on their ability to exist outside of water across Sourcebook in addition. All sources agree that aquatic elves are amphibious. Uh, It's in the name. But the amount of time aquatic elves can leave the water without doing harm to themselves seems to vary fairly wildly. Official lore states that the allotted safe period can be a few minutes, hours, a day, or even upwards of a week. Some lore even places no limitation on their time away from the water at all. Additionally, the result of going beyond these limits varies as well. Some lore states that aquatic elves will begin to drown on land, while other lore states that they simply experience a loss of vitality due to drying out and can remain on land indefinitely, remaining healthy if they take time to soak for an hour a day. It is said that some aquatic elves are uncomfortable breathing fresh water and become fatigued quickly when doing so, while other lore goes the other way, stating they're not harmed by it, but find themselves unable to recover from damage unless they spend time in salt water. Uh, all in all, it's fairly confusing. So DMs, do what you want. Yeah, I can. Uh, I picture the coastal towns of your of your. You know, if you have a coastal region, they're going to have inns with baths and mm-hmm. Epsom salts. They're going to send to your room with you. So they can get some of that commerce from the sea. That's probably some good shit, right? Yeah, I could see that if if aquatic elves weren't so isolationist. But if it's if it's your world where they're more like traveling and there's more. Um, like trade and mm-hmm. travel and communication between the different species. Yeah, absolutely. From That'd a player really perspective, cool, you yeah. become uh, SpongeBob and Sandy's dome after like a day. <laughs> want it. I want it. I uh, need it. I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> Cause if you're going to, you're going to go kill the troll and uh-huh. it lives next to the lake. And that's yeah. not, that's not Gucci for you. You need to fucking hit it with the salt. Maybe, maybe how hard, do you, your lore. how hard do you want to role play? How As brave are you? Master, I'm hand waving all this. You're fine. Oh, that's cool. I I would lean in. Uh, you want to be this? It depends. Like, what yeah. what are you doing? And it doesn't have to be crazy, like something we manage all the time. But it's yeah. like, what are you doing to manage your saltwater skin craving? Yeah. It, carry bottles with you. If if the know. player is interested in doing that, then I'm interested in doing that too. But if the player yeah. doesn't really want to do that, then I'm not. That's too... always my approach. Yeah. Why have the extra thing in the game if nobody wants to do exactly, it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's so. Good. Um, the aquatic elves of Faerun first appeared in the Great Sea untold ages ago. The last of the major elven races to migrate from the elven homeland of um, into Faerun. For many years, these elves lived nomadic lives and spent much of their time exploring the waters of their new world. The aquatic elves did not begin to settle down and form permanent communities in the depths until the, the time of the First Crown War. Now, the Crown Wars are a series of ancient elven civil wars and forgotten realms we've never talked about on the show. Yeah, well, I was. I was I, we're what the fuck not is- about to start now. <laughs> We're moving on. That's next year. Dungeon oh, Cast, The Crown God, Wars. God. Maybe we'll cover them. That's just such deep Forgotten Realms like history lore. Oh, man. I just don't really want to get into it. That's ticky tacky. Um, the CLs were aware of the Crown Wars and often watched the battles from the safety of the water, but kept their interactions with their landbound kin to a minimum. Unfortunately, their attempt to avoid becoming entangled in the wars proved futile. By the time of the fourth Crown War, many aquatic elves fled to the Sea of Fallen Stars to establish a new nation sheltered from the madness of their own kin. Man, okay. I'm really interested in the Crown Wars all of a sudden, but I'm going to let we'll, that go. Maybe we will do an episode on them. You should go back to the paragraph above this because I think we skipped it. Did I skip read. the paragraph? Maybe. Oh, yeah, we did. We did skip And I was reading it a little bit. It's a good one. It is. So 5e states that the first sea elves were a subset. Of, basically, there's two origin stories. I just gave you the Forgotten Realms one. Here's the 5e one. Oh, yeah, okay. One. 5e states that the first sea elves were a subset of primal elves that fell in love with the wild beauty of the ocean in the earliest days of the multiverse. While other elves traveled from realm to realm, the sea elves navigated the deepest currents and explored the waters across a hundred worlds. Today, they live in hidden communities in the ocean shallows, on the elemental plane of water, in their home plane of Arvandor, 
and sometimes even the first layer Celestia. That tracks. That's the like normal normal elf stuff. Our Vandor yeah. and Celestia, right? Yeah, we we even talked about uh, sea elves living in Celestia, and you're like, wait, they're sea elves? That's right? Yeah, you know? I do remember. Yeah, so. Every time there's a new elf, I get annoyed. <laughs> but I've come to um, I've come to embrace them. I um, like elves. It turns out there's a lot of people that don't, or are just like. Maybe maybe that's more from a uh, like a character building perspective. Mm-hmm. They don't like elves. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're gonna be an elf. Like, I roll. I mean, that's a stigma. I think that's out there right now. I could see that being a stigma. That's so odd to me because like the original like the original four playable races were human, dwarf, elf, and halfling, right? So it's yeah, like, you're just going old school, and that's well, cool. I think everyone's like, why the fuck wouldn't I be an elf for so long? Maybe that's the thing because I I know elf was a popular class for a long time uh, like, race, a popular know. idea in culture anyway i wouldn't know about D D back then but, sure yeah but the i'm thinking tieflings the new elf like in today people love tieflings i would say tieflings the new elf but tief, people have been loving tieflings since fourth edition which we're talking like 2007 so it's not that old though i it's mean 14 like, years it's been a while but it, in the life of D. That I think there's a transition period between the elf and the tiefling that happens somewhere in there. Yeah, I think elf is old news. Right, uh, exactly. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Elf is old news. And they get older and older, and the news gets older, too, because they live like a thousand years. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. I think elves are cool. That's all I, I'm going to... I will leave it at that. I'm going to say me, too. Okay. I don't mind them. All right. Well, sea elves are a peaceful culture. They have an outlook on the world that comes from long lives among quiet natural beauty. They're also quite isolationist. Uh, they avoid air breathers as well as other races that dwell beneath the waves. Their cities are usually carved from the rock beneath beds of seaweeds, practically invisible to non-elves. Aquatic elves are viewed by many land-dwelling folk as skittish, distrustful creatures who are afraid to leave the water. While this is not necessarily true, the sea elves have a tendency to only uh, trust their close neighbors and family. And even though they may share many strong bonds of history and culture with uh, the land-dwelling elves, they are not necessarily true allies with them either. Okay. They're very much to themselves. Most seaweeds need to attach themselves to a solid surface such as rocks, wharf piles, or even boats because they can't grow in sand or soft yeah, papa rock because of sense. unstable surface does not provide adequate hold. I was like, seaweed grows from rocks? Yeah. That seems strange. <laughs> what kind of plants grow from rocks? <laughs> Makes total sense. There you go. Thank you, Google. Sorry for, for just jumping out of there. <laughs> it's like all that. good. Um, and as independent uh, as the free-loving sea elves are of each other's communities, they live in even greater isolation from the rest of the undersea races whom they are wary of dealing with. Although the aquatic elves see nothing wrong with the mermen, the tritons, and the other good alliance undersea races, the elves see no reason to involve themselves in the pro- problems of such transitory peoples. It is part of the elven philosophy to let others go about their business with a minimum of interruption. Aquatic elves would prefer it if others returned the favor. Furthermore, aquatic elves are a cautious folk for good reason. Although there are many races considered friendly to the aquatic elves, such as the merfolk and tritons, there are just as many menaces in the deeps. As a result, aquatic aquatic elves remain in their cities and interact with only others uh, when forced to. Okay, cool. So, um, Still, the aquatic elves are a civilized and good-hearted people. It is an extremely rare sight to see an aquatic elf launch an attack and a rarer sight still for an entire band to prepare for war. Sea elves will leave their homes to go to battle only when their entire community is in danger or against great enemies. Uh, when forced to war, they do impress their opponents with their fierce bravery and skill, though. It seems to be thematic with the underwater elves. races. Oh, okay. uh, well, I guess the elves as well. Yeah. We well, never well. fight, but when we do, we're the fucking best at it. Yes, yeah. that, that is true. But I, I was yeah. uh, I was thinking of, like, the sea races are like, oh, fuck, here's the Kraken. Like, Yeah, you got Kraken, you got Abolith, you got, got Sahuagin, you got uh, fucking, what are those guys got the kuotoa technically you got giants down there yeah you got giants down there that aren't necessarily always nice no yeah. they're not always nice <laughs> no they're not the storm giant and volo's guys gonna yeah, like what, fucking the man grab a boat oh god yeah, you got that. shout out to demogorgon shout out to demogorgon so aquatic elves are known to hold promises sacred and prefer death to failing to complete something that they've sworn to do if they die in the process of fulfilling their promise, their next of kin are bound to take over the responsibility to complete it. Okay. In fact, the slightest implication that an aquatic elf will not keep their word is a very deep offense. Ah. <clears throat> sea elves are wise enough, however, to hold promises received from non-elves as highly suspect, both because aquatic elves know that other races will not honor the promises of their dead, and also because only other elves have the lifespan to complete any truly serious task from their point of view. I think that's actually fairly reasonable. I, I think so too. That's that's not a bad way like, to go about your business. They're so serious about promises that 
you know your next of kin will get it done. Yeah, like, yeah. And you know no other race on Earth besides other elves will do that. Yeah, I'd feel the same way. Yeah. So, sails tend to dwell beneath the crashing waves of wild coastlines rather than farther out at sea. A small communities of 200 to 400 inhabitants are the usual aquatic elven lifestyle. These communities are often found in heavy weed beds in sheltered waters, though the elves may fashion homes in caverns and lagoon bottoms and among coral reefs as well. I was going to say, uh, what's like a general population of a coral reef like? How many fish typically live there? Because 200 to 400 sea elves. sea elves is like, I mean, by me who lives in capitalist America understands there's like, we're going to cram people into places if or, true or true. not, I guess. Yeah. But also like that seems small is what I'm trying to say. The ocean's a very big place. Yeah. Very, no, very they, they have small communities. Yeah. Is, is, is the there ocean, a series of small communities? Is the ocean a big place in fantasy? Yes, it's huge. Good. Just as huge. Just as big. <laughs> Just as unexplored. Exactly. Okay. Uh, these communities are off. Oh, yeah, I already read that. Um, sea elf communities keep in touch with, with each other through an elaborate and inefficient custom of wandering heralds slash messengers who travel from one band to another, much like postal carriers transmitting oral messages. Sea, elves, sea elf communities are extremely close-knit. They believe that alliance and community means survival, while factionalism and arrogance means death. While each family or single resident often has a home to call his or her own, the concept of private property, for the most part, is non-existent among aquatic elves. Whatever given items an aquatic elf carries currently carries on their person is uh, to be considered theirs, so but everything else belongs to the community as a whole. Tools, weapons, and other miscellaneous objects uh, trade hands very often. Uh, an aquatic elf in need of a particular item simply takes one they find without fear of repercussion. Hmm. Theft is relatively unknown in sea elf society as a result. One cannot steal something if everyone considers the object community property. Yeah. This attitude does not extend... That's how I look at it. You sure. It's real life for me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this attitude does not extend to non-aquatic elf visitors, however, and such visitors are often watched to make sure that they keep their hands to themselves. What the fuck, though? <laughs> okay. But also, <laughs> like, how do you do both of these? It's because, like... They're going to treat community, it. They're going to treat it they like it's know theirs. that if Aquatic Elf Jeff grabs Aquatic Elf Bob a shovel, he's just going to go use it and put it back. But they know if Human Stan comes down, you know he'll take that shovel and you'll never see Human Stan again. Uh, yeah, the um, the polymorph dragon Jeff Bezos is going to come <laughs> take your shovel and sell go. it on uh, sell it on the Zon. Absolutely. So uh, Aquatic Elven Society is based on family and clan. Noble families and monarchs rule, but in a benign and loose fashion rather than with an iron fist. Aquatic elven rulers instead are a reflection of their people and usually are rather generous, allowing members of the community to borrow what few magic items and weapons that may be kept in the royal vaults. Um, while female sea elves do have positions of power, aquatic elven society seems to be largely patriarchal. I wonder if, uh, if sea elves are like, uh, oh, shaka, bro. Like, we're, <laughs> we're totally tubular flow today oh, out my there. Gosh. Like they're from but they're long, they're long curly. Yeah. They're they, long curly. They talk like they're characters from Rocket Power. You remember Rocket Power? I remember Rocket Power. I the, loved Rocket the Power. The cartoon from the 1990s. <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, I think it was uh, early, early 2000s. Let's take a look. I'm, I'm guessing 2002, is my guess. All for right. Rocket Power. We have 2002 on the board. I'm going to say 1989. No, 89. Uh, 1999. Okay, okay. Let's um, see. But I said that as I read it. I was going to go a year earlier, actually, uh -huh. and go a 1998. Oh, so it was 1999. But it was 1999 okay, to well, 2004. Then, then it was from so the 1990s. You were basically right. I mean, 1999 to 2004. Before. You said early 2000s. I, right? I hit right in the center, right? I yeah. Hit, I hit yeah. the heart of it. Yeah. So. You, you, you're not wrong. <laughs> okay. It is from that time. It is. <laughs> so each community of sea elves is self sufficient, raising their own kelp and hunting fish when necessary. Uh, sea elves are also adept scavengers. Their scavenging parties uncover artifacts and tidbits of knowledge from a vast collection of underwater ruins and sunken ships. Between this and their travels while hunting, sea elves can be valuable sources of information regarding the lands beneath the sea. It is said that the sea elf traders remember the histories of other races back beyond the imaginings of the current generation based off their exploration of ancient ruins beneath the sea. The trick is to get them to re reveal this information or really to even get a conversation going with one because they don't like people. Okay. Um, did, 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 was this, this cat's name was not Maurice. Yeah, it was. It was Maurice. Well, like, that's not what they called him. What did they call this guy? Uh, what did they call him? Man. Uh, tra tra <laughs> uh, 
I gotta click him now. Oh man, are we doing this? I remember an episode where they were like, "Yeah, his name's Maurice." And Twister. 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 Yes. It was Holy Twister. shit! This guy's name now is I wanna Sam make Dullard. A, I want to make a CL fighter named Twister. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. You do the water tornado from Korra. Absolutely. And, and Airbender, I guess yeah. so they're just like fucking throwing discs <laughs> out. Oh man. So sculpture is the primary art form of aquatic elves, as other mediums are likely to be destroyed by the water in short order or proved to be impossible to perform underwater, such as smithing. Okay. Uh, intri- intricately carved, breathtaking reliefs cover the walls of most aquatic elven cities, and statues are also quite common. Aquatic elves are also quite musical. Their powerful, powerful voices travel further than one might expect underwater. Their music is heard as a thrumming song akin to the sound of sonorous whale songs and dolphin noises. That sounds dope. I yeah, know, that does sound that dope. sounds pretty cool. Uh, these songs are often very long and tend to evoke the rolling calm of the ocean. Um, bards, thusly, are quite common amongst aquatic elven society. That's cool. It is How, when cool. do we get a lore like that? You know, like there's a bunch of bards here. Yeah, they love singing and they're really good at it. Yeah, yeah you could, don't get it as often as you bards. Think you I guess would be a good one. Barbarians. Yeah. You don't really get like a society of wizards, do you? Like that seems pretty spread out. Like there's I a mean, wizard in this castle. They exist, but it's not like built into a race, really. Yeah, kind of, I mean, maybe high elves. High yeah. elves is the closest I think you're going to get to. Everyone here is at least marginally trained in magic. Okay, so. maybe that's a, maybe I'm overlooking stuff. Like maybe that's a cool idea to start implementing, like a a town of tiefling sorcerers. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, like, I can see that stuff like that. Yeah, everybody's just fucking wiling out, exploding their magics everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it'd be really hard not to get like the humans riled up that there's a bunch of demons and they have to like get over there with their pitchforks. That's so. fair, huh? Yeah. Well, maybe they don't have a choice but to let it go on because they're all fucking sorcerers. Yeah, so. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> so because the elves dwell beneath water, the products of aquatic elven crafting differ significantly from their counterparts on the surface. Sea elves have developed a range of waterproof magical items and a system of writing underwater using either cured shark skin or thick seaweed and an extremely viscous ink. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. I they do not that. often like oil, use oil, straight up oil. Right, right. Right. Basically, they do not often use metal, as it is almost impossible to forge underwater. And iron, bronze, and steel all corrode quickly when exposed to the ocean waters. What little metal they do make use of is usually traded for or scavenged from shipwrecks. Excuse me. The exception to this, though, is gold, which does not corrode and is easily shaped in its raw form. Beaten gold jewelry is common among aquatic elves. Beyond that, most aquatic elves' items are crafted from stone, coral, shells, and animal materials such as bone, narwhal horns, turtle shells, shark skin, or chitin. That's a pretty cool aesthetic. It is. That's that's a really dope aesthetic. That's not bad. My conch shell football players were in line with this. (laughs) Very in line. Yes, absolutely. Maybe I I should. It's a fighter. They're actually they're an athlete for their uh, they have the athlete feet. Okay, yeah. They they're wearing the conch shell football thing, and their name's Twister. How do, <laughs> that's not bad. We're doing a light character creation we on this are. episode. It's this happening. is very good. Keep rolling with that. Twister the seal. I want to say a bad joke before we move on because I keep forgetting and remembering it in okay, between paragraphs. So if what I'm a pirate, do I see elves or I see elves? We're uh, moving on. Yeah, We're moving let's on. Go. Of the many <laughs> elven sub races, the aquatic elves are the ones who have embraced the art of magic the least. This is not to say that there are no spellcasters among their kind but that the proportion of their population unable to harness magic is far higher than other elven societies. The reasons for this are unknown, but there is a legend among scholars that the drow stole the ability from them long ages ago. Um, Regardless of how this came to be, sea elves are enchanted by the idea of magic, though they realize that land elves are better equipped to deal with it. Thus, they often trade rare and decorative items they have found to the high elves in exchange for magic items or spell work they need but cannot perform themselves. This makes sense. This Reminds me of uh, our giant lore. Like, we're going to go get weapons from <clears throat> people that have them. Like, because yeah. we're not going to bother to, like, learn to make them. It's just in us not to make weapons because we just don't do that. Like, yeah. a fire giant will, a frost giant will. Right. No, and then that doesn't make sense. Can't. So, for me, I, 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 I like the idea of, they're like, well, these elves aren't, like, all magic like all elves tend to be. Mm-hmm. But because I, I, I don't remember the Tritons being particularly magic either. Not really. And I don't... I think they made four good magical, like, subclasses, but not... Yeah, they have that in, charisma, don't they? They have a charisma bonus, I, I believe. I think it was something like that. So maybe they're the good sorcerers. Because I'm thinking storm sorcerer here. I'm like, wouldn't a sea elf make a good storm sorcerer? But apparently not. Uh, Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I'm sure you can make it work. It just... 
they do more bard magic it sounds like you know like they're more about like the beauty yeah, of their environment the they're magic, sculpting yeah. like they're just under the water that's there's something magical yeah, about that true. their hair doesn't so, disintegrate yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty magical yeah uh those sea elves are ultimately a peace-loving free-living society there is one race in particular that should be mentioned in the context of enmity to the aquatic elves the Sahuagin. They're back. They're back. The shark folk. Aquatic elves possess a fierce and blinding hatred for the sea devils and often wage senseless wars against them. <laughs> the one sure way to overcome an aquatic elf's natural shyness and wariness is to offer them a chance to attack and possibly kill some some of the sea elves' most hated enemies. <laughs> they wake up and choose violence every <laughs> single day. Every single time. <laughs> this isn't much of a surprise, really, as almost every undersea people, with the exception of the perverse Exotagitals, hates the sea devils. Shout out to Demogorgon. Shout Demo out to Demogorgon. But sea elves generate a passion for conflict with the swagon that surprises even themselves. But <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I had that in me, bro. Oh, shit. You see that? You see that? I just killed that man. I killed him so good. <laughs> oh. oh, man, um, his jaw's still in my hand. <laughs> it's amazing. Sir. Aquatic elves leave their sheltered vans in war parties <clears throat> if they have reason to suspect that the swagon are dwelling nearby. Okay. Should a party of sea elves encounter Swahagin, the former nearly always attack if they outnumber their hated foes. Aquatic elves also make it a point to kill any great sharks in their territory, as sharks are noted allies and pets of the Swahagin. And the Swahagin deity is an evil shark deity. I cannot wait to never say the word Swahagin again. Swahagin. Is that it for Swahagin? Is no. this their exit from the podcast? No, there's more. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll, well drink some water. I think Twister should go out and kill great sharks, and when he does it, he should be like, uh, must have been a, just a good shark, I guess. <laughs> Stupid. Shaka, huh? Shaka, bro. <laughs> Your Twister impression is weak. It's pretty bad. It <laughs> wasn't Twister at first. It's a me. It's true, it's true. <laughs> there is a secret bond between... Oh, yeah. There's a secret bond between aquatic elves and their hated enemies, the Swahagun. <laughs> God damn it. Swahagun. They're, though the, neither race will openly acknowledge it. Okay. If sea elves are present... Within a mile or so of a Sahuagin encampment, Sahuagin. then <laughs> approximately one out of every 100 Sahuagin births resembles an aquatic elf rather than a sea devil. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we talked about yes. this in the Sahuagin episode. That's right. Most of the time, these offspring, known as Malenti, are eaten by their parents. Yeah. How nice. Cool. Once in a great while, though, a Malenti is allowed to live to adulthood because its physical resemblance to an aquatic elf, in combination with its Sohagen upbringing and attitude, make it an ideal spy in elven communities. <laughs> That's got to be a rough couple first weeks up yeah, in there. Indeed. Indeed, Malenti often develop the ability to sense the presence and position of any aquatic elves within 120 feet of themselves, an invaluable skill for either a spy or a scout for an invading Sohagen force. Mm -hmm. Few aquatic elves believe in the existence of Malenti as their existence suggests some disturbing possibilities about Sohagen origins. <laughs> Malenti do exist, however, and are identical to aquatic elves in most ways. They age much faster, though, with a lifespan of only 170 years or so. Though the sea elves themselves have a difficult time discerning Malenti spies, dolphins might sense one of the changelings. Malenti, understandably, are not fond of dolphins. It is possible for Sohagen and Malenti to breed, um, the spawn and verily being Malenti as well. This is just like a... Or I think it's sea elves and Malenti to breed, actually. This is so detailed, you know? Like, this yeah. is definitely in a module or something, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. The Malenti is, like, the juicy part of this whole, like... Yeah, this the is the plot hook for, like, they've been here the whole time. They've got kids. Yeah, like, exactly. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> I the, like the... The Sawagan come, they're like, okay, tell us what to do. He's like, no, you have to leave. I love them. <laughs> what if... Okay, so... <laughs> it's... If a sea elf and a Malenti have a baby it's going to be a malenti okay sure and no yeah. one can tell the difference unless you're a dolphin unless you're a dolphin and we'll just say there's no dolphin echo the dolphin is going to save the day absolutely but uh, let's say this malenti has left the sahaga behind he's like fuck those guys they ate all my siblings oh and yeah, i actually yeah. hate them yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna chill with you guys you guys I, i'm gonna die mysteriously young but like otherwise you, you won't have any idea that's oh, we're right. We're gonna have babies. They have like a thirty-year lifespan or something like that, right? What? Is that Sohagen? No, is uh, I'm pulling that from nowhere. How long do they live? I don't remember. Uh, but I got um, it. <laughs> but it's 170 years for the Malenti. What if the Malenti has babies with a sea elf? Three, three babies, and those babies grow up, and then they have babies, and then next thing you know, fast forward 500 years, 600 years. I almost thought you were town, gonna say 500 babies. <laughs> this town is all Malenti. Okay. Except for they're all Malenti who think they're sea elves. Yeah, they're like. Malenti 
with seal of culture. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like, at what point have they stopped being Malenti? I wasn't so far off. They were like 40 to 60. Okay, yeah. Uh, so so, so they, they do live a long time in comparison to their Sohagen kin. So. Uh, no, no. I mean, the Sohagen live 40, about 40 Yeah, years. that's what I mean. And Malenti live 170. Oh, okay. Yeah, that. Okay. I've yeah. put it all together yeah. now. Here so we are. wouldn't it be really interesting for a party to come across a community of sea elves and then something happens where it gets revealed none of these are sea elves or actually all Malenti and they didn't know it the whole time. Yeah. I don't know. I, I was thinking about that when I was writing this. That'd be, that'd be cool. I mean, like, you'd have to... I need a little more there to... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's just the seed of an idea. I don't know what you would do with it, but, like, that, that could, could be That could cool. be a thing. Yes, yeah, exactly. it could exist. Yeah. Especially with, like, the small-ish, like, communities... Uh, or maybe like the CLs know about them and they're like, yeah, you guys live over there and partition their their outposts or whatever. Right. Could be stuff like that. Yeah. Segregation. It's always great in fantasy. So CL, <laughs> CLs have no other major enemies, but they dislike surface dwelling fishermen due to the number of CL snared nets and mistakenly killed a Sahagan by these ignorant humans. No. Oh. Yeah. Aquatic elves have a strong affinity for dolphins and most aquatic elf communities have several of these creatures as guardians. Uh, messengers and playful companions. Aquatic elves also have a great and abiding respect for the larger whales. And although the migratory habits of the great sea mammals precludes the possibility of recruiting them as guardians or companions, many aquatic elves build communities along established migration routes so that twice yearly they receive visits from the stately creatures. Mm. A young aquatic elf often leaves home for a year just to accompany a pod of migrating whales. And some aquatic elf communities have been known to train and keep sea lions as guardians as well, especially in dangerous areas. Oh, shit. Yeah. So any questions about CLs before we pull up the stat block for the subrace? Um, do I have any questions about CLs? <laughs> uh, no. I mean, let's let's take a look at the at the block. Okay. Um, is it me that needs to look at the block? Um, traditionally, that's how we've been doing it. I should have um, pulled it up. I have been just been sitting here. Uh, <laughs> I forgot so. to tell you before. Okay. Well, I'm looking at the C elf. Um, you got. For them, when you pick them to become a character, mm -hmm. you're going to get an ability score imp increase of constitution by one. Uh, you mm -hmm. get sea elf training. You have proficiency with the spear, trident, light crossbow, and net. That's nice. cool. Net proficiency? Fuck yeah. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Child of the sea, you have a swimming speed of 30 feet. I fucking hope so. And you can breathe air and <clears throat> water. Dope, dope. Nice. Friend of the sea, using gestures and sounds, you can communicate simple ideas with any beast that has an innate swimming speed. Aquaman style. Like That's it. pretty nice. Yeah. I think, uh, isn't Aquaman like actually psychic with them though? And this is more, this is like, do the thing, I'm dancing. It's body language. Um, Aquaman does like I a, don't know. When I see an Aquaman clip from back in the day, I see like a fucking sonar beam like boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Come out of his fucking yeah. face. He, I think he can kind of take command of them. Yeah. Yeah. He can ride sharks into battle yeah. and they're, they're super going to die. Yeah. Like, absolutely. We can't kill Superman. Have you seen The Boys? The Boys? Yeah. Have you ever seen The Boys? You haven't seen The Boys. Uh, I've seen Boys. I've seen Boys that I call, look at, the, like those boys over there. I've never no, seen The man, Boys. No, dude. There's a show. I can't believe if you haven't seen it. It's on. Um, really? You can't? I mean, <laughs> it just seems like something you would have seen or that Jake would have told you to go watch. Jake tells me to do a lot of things. <laughs> He's a very special guest and he there has great is, taste. It is a show based off of an independent comic. It is a superhero show. Uh -huh. And basically, it's like, what if heroes existed in our Oh, on world? Amazon. Yes, it's on Amazon. Yeah. Prime. I was um, told a lot about this. Yes, it's very good. But there is an Aquaman style character, right? Because there are tropes of many you of talking the about Aquaman getting sea animals killed. Reminded me of this character. His name is the Deep. <laughs> and you That's should good. go watch the show because it's amazing. Yeah, every time I hear about it, I probably like absolutely cackle fantastic. or whatever you know because yeah. they, they've got some good tropes. <clears throat> Anyways, um, you can speak and read and write Aquan. Nice. So they get all that plus all the elf stuff, which I think is like fans, history, keen senses. You can't plus two to decks to sleep. Yeah, um, trance. Trance, that's a good, like, meditation for four hours instead of resting. Um, let's see. Uh, you get a 30-foot walking speed as an elf. Elves range from five to six feet tall. They love freedom and shit. Um, <laughs> they, uh, the fan interesting thing. Advantage on saving throws against being charmed, and magic can't put you to sleep. Nice. The trance. Keen sense is proficiency and perception, which is good. Always good. Always a good thing. Elven eyes. Um, oh, yeah, the elven eyes. Sea elven eyes look old as shit when they're old as shit. So like uh, like an anime, like the the demon, the demon eyes, they get like drawn in black and white. 
that's a kind of a meme right now a little mm. bit. So mm. maybe I'm missing I'm missing the mark here. We'll go mm. on the phone later. But mm -hmm. when uh, when an anime character gets drawn in like black and white with like the lines all fucking crazy, like not defined on the outside, like somebody was moving their hand back and forth really fast as they drew. Oh, okay. Like that, like all crazy, like fuzzed out, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they close up on the eyes, and the eyes are all fucking dark and like sunk. I think in I know what shit. you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So like, that's that's old old uh. Old Sawag and look like they're gonna go psycho on you. I can see that. <laughs> um. So what do you think about sea elves in comparison old to Sawagin like tritons or merfolk? What do I think about sea elves in compared to? Tritons? Yeah, in comparison to the other um. Sea I aquatic still, humanoids. I still like tritons the best. Yeah, they are the coolest. Their look is. Yeah better i think yeah i mean their look is kind of similar ish i know i know like yeah. even with a water genasi like even that is kind of like they're all yeah they're all walking that line yeah. you know how do we make it look like it's from the ocean i don't know dog <laughs> put a fucking fin on it i'm not make it wear clam titties i'm not too <laughs> i'm not too big of a fan of the water genasi that look more like uh like aquatic animal like because all the other genasi don't look animal like they look elemental like so yeah, I yeah. think a water genasi should look more water like but that's the, just I me. think there's both I think the one in the is the one in the <clears throat> PHB the one that I'm thinking of like is there a picture of them in the PHB that's I don't like, remember I'd have to go look There's one that's like wearing too much clothes and he's got fins on his face and it's holding the bible or something I don't know it's not my uh, it's not my favorite I don't I don't I have no idea what you're talking about I'm but Googling I think it's it. time to get ready for a long rest All right <laughs> What are we giving him today? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the part of the oh, episode God. where... Uh, uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to the long rest. Uh, this is the part of the episode where we put on our our, uh, our slippies and go to bed. Somebody wanted the slippies back, so here they are. Um, they One's got my face and one's got Will's face. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. So we are going to build our beholder now. Mm -hmm. Get ready. Indeed we are. Fucking buckle up, everybody. This is feature and ray number nine. So we only got one more after this before our creation is complete. Uh, I think I have a ray. Uh, okay. I will do the feature then. Okay. Yeah. You want me to go first? Yes. Um, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head, um, because, like, the sea elves don't seem to have, like, an inherent water magic thing going on. As a matter of fact, the only inherent magical thing they seem to be, have going on is the whole Aquaman speaks to animals thing. Yeah. So I think uh, an Aquaman ray is in order here, in which the ray sends out an echo echolocation beacon. And all sea animals come to the aid of this creature <laughs> within a within a mile. Even distance. lake fish, they're really trying to get there. Yeah, they yeah, die exactly. On the way. All aquatic animals, we'll say within two hundred feet. You got a fish rush on, to the aid of this. You have a beholder. fish in your pocket. It's gonna betray you. <laughs> um, so this obviously this creature, mu this beholder has to be live at least either on the beach or in the water. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> you know, we got a liquid beholder on our indeed, on our hands here. Um, it is instead of round, it is tubular like a dolphin. Tubular. Oh gosh, it's like long. It's a little bit like a hot dog. Does it have a dolphin beak? It has a dolphin beak. Does it have any? Do we give it any other beaks? This it's thing got is, swords for teeth. It's got swords for teeth. It's got swords. It's for got teeth. spider tentacles. It's got spider tentacles. It's got. Uh, it's uh, got goat legs dangling under it. It's got remoras fins. It's got remoras fins, which is great for the water. I really like the goat. The goat legs dangling. <laughs> they don't dangle in the air anymore. They're fucking They're flowing behind the it like the flow. That's, They've got this beholder has flow. This this beholder is fucking hideous. It looks like a fucking. Uh, it's a scene from the side, for sure. Yeah, now. for sure. It's now a scene it from any angle. It's a scene from freak. the front, always, but now it's a scene, also a scene from the side because I've given it more three-dimensional depth than it should have. <laughs> <laughs> and a long, a long bottom nose. It definitely nose. has like a dorsal it's, fin or, or not a dorsal not a, fin. What's the... the a tail? The, end? the tail, yeah. Does like it have a, a dolphin tail? A dolphin tail? In the back, yeah. You said it's shaped like a dolphin. It's just... Tubular, like I don't know. Instead of spherical, it has become more tubular, and it's I got a long, pointy that. nose. Let's make it full dolphin form. It's a beholder on a <laughs> dolphin body. Well, it's a, it's a it's a dolphin. If a dolphin a beholder had a baby, it would be shaped like a dolphin, but be beholderish. So it's not as long as a dolphin, but not as round as a beholder. Yes, and the tentacles are everywhere. And it definitely it has still. the dolphin beak and the dolphin tail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There it is. It looks like a dolphin. <laughs> Is horrendous. I love it. We have a Discord. Go in there and find Dungeons and Dragons games and ask questions about lore to our very uh, awesome and knowledgeable mods. Um, thank you guys for all Indeed. you do. Indeed, and you know what? We we finally wrapped up our contest where we gave away uh, Van Richten's guide to Ravenloft, and we got two winners. 
Um, let me see. I forgot that's, to pull them up. That's more than one. Yeah, yeah, it's more than one winner. That's like um, twice the amount. Pulling up the Twitter winner right now. Twitter winner, chicken dinner. And God, they, why did they have to change Twitter's interface? Twitter! Um, can you pull up the Instagram, man? Because uh, that winner's on there. <laughs> Stop fucking with our show, Twitter. Okay, I wasn't Let's ready to pull up here. Instagram, Will. But I'm always ready to pull up Instagram, if you know what I mean. God, I love taking those pics. You guys remember when I ran it and I posted all that stuff? <laughs> That's a joke about how I fucking right. didn't do anything. Here we go. So, congratulations to at Weeble Wobbling Ooh. on Twitter. Uh, you've won a copy of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Uh, we will be sending that out today as of the recording of this episode right now. And Brian's pulling up the winner on Instagram. Uh, thank you, everyone, who entered the contest. It really helps us out by spreading the word. Um, and we will undoubtedly have another contest coming up soon, probably the next book that gets announced or something else cool. We'll yeah, see. maybe something big. Um, yeah. Spread the word, win the book. Uh, okay, so on Instagram, thank you very much to J-L-S-I-N-A-N-A-N. J-L Sinanan. <laughs> thank Jill, you, J-L Sinanan. Jill Sinanan. <laughs> thank you, Jill Sinanan, for spreading the word. Thank you, Hope Jill you enjoy Sinanan. your book. Your book is also going to be ordered as of the day of this recording, which oh. is far ahead of time of when you guys are hearing it. I really like the font on this Instagram post. This is good. This is, is a good post. Is there anything else we want to I add? wasn't the one. Um, yeah, we have an Instagram and Twitter if you guys didn't fucking catch that. Um <laughs> Go check it out. Yeah, the links will be in the description. Check out oh. uh, check out everything you need to know about Dima Gorgon. Shout out to Dima oh, Gorgon. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got a new series going on YouTube, uh, like 10 to 20 minute series of straight shots of information. Right now we're focusing on like gods and, and demons and demon lords and all that other stuff. All that juice, the juiciest stuff that has, has to offer. And also keep an eye out for DD5 because yeah. those, are, those are coming out now yeah, too. Yeah, that'll be coming out soon after this recording as well. I'm hoping next week. Yeah, we'll see. Um, um, you know. That's gonna that's gonna be focused on more mechanical stuff that like some of the more complicated stuff that needs to get explained in in short order if if you just need a quick video to to yeah. watch. Yeah, and Super Quest Saga is doing really well as a show. So thank you guys to all of the fans out mm -hmm. there who are Super Quest Saga fans and also listen here. If you don't listen to Super Quest Saga, I highly highly recommend it. It is a wonderful D and D actual play podcast. Indeed. Um, so with that, I think we can call it a game. Let's call it a game. Goodbye. Dungeon Cast.